This is JPR, Jefferson Public Radio's News and Information Service. It's 840 on the Jefferson Exchange. I'm Jeffrey Riley. Thank you for listening. Every occupation is a bit different from the next, and there are things required in some workplaces that are never expected in others. Your boss is probably not going to tell you to kiss a coworker while suggestively stroking his leg. But these are the kinds of things that actors are supposed to do on stage. You can see the opportunity for embarrassment and confusion and more, which is why the Oregon Shakespeare Festival recently announced the naming of its first resident intimacy director. Sarah Lozoff has an unusual job as the first resident intimacy director for the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. Her main job is to help actors choreograph on stage intimacy. But the other part of her job is to educate others about why her role is even necessary. They're being told, hey, make that hotter, mm -hmm. make that sexier. Well, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. What's sexy to me might not be sexy to you, <laughs> right? If I say, hey, can we slow that down a little bit? Can we use some breath work? What if your back arches a little bit more here? Acting has been around since the 6th century. But for an ancient art form, the theatre world is just acknowledging the need to choreograph love scenes safely. Good, yeah, can we try this just one more time and make sure we know where that hand grab comes and then... Can you actually describe your role, your day-to-day -day as an intimacy director? How do you bring a script to life for an intimate scene? So a large part of that is, is consent work. Teaching it, unpacking it, figuring out what that is at this time in our culture. The second part of that is protocols, and that can be something as simple as we have some nudity and um, making sure that when we're in tech and an actor is asked to hang out on stage for hours, that maybe they're in a robe until they absolutely don't have to be because now we're lighting their skin. And then the third part is the actual choreography <laughs> and the, the crafting of these moments and making sure that they're improving the storytelling. When she pushes you, you, you're surprised by it. You don't have time to get your bag. You can get it when you cross to make those amends, right? Yeah. You mentioned that the boundary setting is some of the most difficult work. What do you mean by that? It's a gig economy. Uh, so we want to get hired again. Um, and often the advice that we have grown up with and been trained with is don't be difficult to work with say yes and. If we can get people to start saying no, then we can trust it. Because now we actually have options. If yes is the only acceptable answer, that's not an option. And it becomes quite meaningless. It's a mandate then. I swear to thee, by Cupid's strongest bond. Nubia Monks and Jonathan Stevens play two teenagers crazy in love in this year's production of OSF's Midsummer Night's Dream. Sorry if I'm interrupting. Oh, hi. <laughs> hey, was that intimacy? <laughs> yeah, this is how we do it. We were just checking in. Yeah. Oh, yeah? yeah. What's checking in? And we start with asking each other, what places on your body are you not comfortable with me touching? That is body mapping. And you do that every time, every... Before a rehearsal, yep. before a show, we'll check in. My shoulders are green. Great. My tummy is green. Okay. My back is green. Okay. Legs green. Mm -hmm. Feet green. Mm -hmm. And for today, I'm gonna say butt green too. Hey. If, if you, if you, yeah, you don't have to, but no, butt's, okay. butt's green if we wanna, if we wanna play. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Oh God, I wanna do that every day with my boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> How am I feeling today? You better make him body man. That's, right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> As actors, we forget that we have agency, especially when it comes to intimacy. You mean to tell me I don't gotta hug you if I don't want to? You mean to tell me if I'm not feeling it today, you don't have to kiss? You mean to tell, and the director is, is okay with that. You don't have to feel guilty about it. If you were to rehearse the scene without an intimacy director, what would you do? You'd probably just kind of make a choice and go. Like the director will probably give us blocking and then it's up to us. Do we kiss here? Do we hold hands yeah. here? Do we hug here? Touching, mm. you can say so much mm. with that. You have no clue what could be happening yeah. up on that stage that might seem okay, but actually might be inappropriate within between the two actors, you know? When you first sort of interacted with Sarah, with the intimacy director, and, and, and now, what is your opinion of intimacy director? It changed my life. It changed my entire trajectory because I was 
ready to walk away from this craft because of the sexual trauma that I had in, in experienced over the years. Directors weren't trained to, you know, work on intimacy. And from someone like me who, yeah, has sexual trauma, to do to just be thrown into stuff like that, it 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 created this really bitter taste in my mouth towards the craft. I wonder if he can do that into her instead of getting further from her. A, a nuzzle, a nestle, yeah. Lozov got her start at OSF by teaching choreography and movement. She came across intimacy directing by chance in an article that highlighted a grassroots collective called Intimacy Directors International. What does it take to become an intimacy director? There were 15 of us training for advocacy and consent work and talking about implicit bias and sensitivity training, but also actually choreographing intimacy um, and simulated sex and talking about what those protocols are. Anything I could get to as an observer, as an assistant um, with Tonya and Alicia Rodas, those two women have been at the forefront of this for quite some time. <laughs> 